it's Jacqueline or Galactica and as you can see I have been hoarding some craft kits for quite some time so today I thought that we'd choose one and you can watch me suffer and attempt to make something out of one of these. So basically I've got a whole bunch of craft kits here of crafts that I've never tried before which is quite a feat because I have done a lot of different crafts. I have tried cross stitch before but uh, I was like really young and my mum finished it for me so um, yeah we're, we're not going to count that. So we have a little cross stitching kit here with two little kitties. How cute are they? We have a wool felting kit which I've wanted to try for quite some time so I bought like the um, little starter pack too. We have this embroidery kit that I got from uh, Spotlight, which looks pretty interesting. I think I might choose this one. I really, I've wanted to do embroidery for quite some time. So that's, that's one I'll put over here. So we have sand art, which looks interesting. And we have a crochet kit. Another thing that I've wanted to try for quite some time. I think I got this one from Cheapest Chips. If you're Australian, you know what I mean. If not, then it's kind of like the Dollar Tree, I suppose. It's a discount shop. So that's where I got that from. But yeah, I think today I'm going to be doing the embroidery kit. So if you see something here that you want to see me try in the next video, let me know. Maybe I'll make like a little poll thing in that, that iCard section. I'm still, I'm still a bit of a YouTube noob, so bear with me. I'll, I'll put something where you can vote on which one to do. But yeah, let's get into it. So let's zoom you guys in just a little bit. Now it says... Follow and stitch bamboo hoop embroidery kit and it says there's a hoop included but I have read through the little packaging on the back and it doesn't say what I need. So I'm assuming that I'm going to need some scissors of some sort but it says it comes with an embroidery needle and a hoop and everything like that but let's open it up and see what's inside. Alright, so here's our little hoop and here's our little our little fox pattern to um to copy off of. So it said that you can do it as intricately as you like, it'll just teach you the basic stitches, which is you know pretty much one of what I want to know. It's a cute little design, I like foxes. And here's our instruction manual. Oh my gosh, it's huge. Ugh. Okay. Just give me a second to read this and I'll be right back. I've read through the instructions and this is literally all we're getting for the stitches and how to do the stitches. And for someone that doesn't know anything about embroidery, this is this is really confusing. Like it does that it that doesn't show you anything. So I'm probably gonna have to look up a YouTube video as I go. But let's start with putting the design on. So place this smaller inside hoop. Oh the smaller inside hoop, okay on a table and place the pre-printed calico design on top so that the design is in the middle of the circle underneath. Okay. Okay. 
You know, I've read the entire instructions and still nowhere did it say what I need. Like, clearly I need a pair of scissors. Alright, I'll be back. I'm just going to sort out all of my thread. Okay, so I went ahead and separated my embroidery thread and put it through my needle, which was insanely hard because it's two and putting one through a needle is hard enough and I also decided to cut it to half the size as well so every dashed line is a running stitch all right so we're going to start with that we'll start with a running stitch so I threaded my orange first so running stitch is probably the easiest and what I wanted to start with because I do have some knowledge of sewing I've sewn my own dresses, I've sewn my own couch covers, I've sewn my own um, my own car seat covers, but most of it's machine sewn. So I guess we'll just follow these lines. Hey, I hope you guys can see this. Maybe I'll change the camera angle slightly. All right, how's that? Is that better? So. I did a little bit of research that said you can kind of do this technique, but oh, no. Nah. Then it's going to cover up. Like, I don't want any of this orange showing. So I'm just going to do it the slow way. Don't come at me. I'm a noob. I don't know what I'm doing. This must be so frustrating for people that actually know how to embroider. So yeah, I'm just going to finish this one off. Damn it. <laughs> no. Oh, that's so sad. Oh, look at that. First go. I'm a pro already. Okay, I'm, I'm at the end here. And I've just realized that in the instructions, there is nowhere that says how to finish it off. So I'm going to have to find a video on how to finish off an embroidery stitch. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I found a little technique to use. And it just pretty much is you go through one of your existing stitches. And then you make a loop and pull. Did that change the outside? No. Cool. I did it. I might do it again just for good measure, you know. I saw a few videos on how to start and finish them. And I mean, one of them just looks so unnecessarily complicated. So I just picked the easy option. So now that we've done a running thread, let's try a different stitch and then I'll go away for a little while and come back and show you what it looks like all at the end. But we'll learn the stitches together. So let's next go with, hang on, let's bring our instructions over, our very vague instructions. What are these flowers in? So lazy daisy stitch is that what they are all right let's go with that so i'm gonna go look up a video for a lazy daisy stitch because this is all we have to go from and i'll be back okay so i watched a video on how to do the lazy daisy stitch so let's try it out 
I've already threaded my yellow and put a little knot in the end. Okay, so it wants us to go from where we started, put the needle where we want to go, and then wrap a loop around the needle, and then pull it through. Is that gonna work? Hey, I did it! And then to finish it, put just a little thread at the top. Oh, look, I did it! I feel so clever. Now I kind of want to do a French knot in the middle, so I'm going to real quick look up how to do a French knot. Okay, so I learnt a French knot, wrap it around about three or four times, bake it right in the middle. I'm probably doing this so bad. It didn't work. <sighs> what am I doing wrong? Maybe it has to be closer to the base. I feel like in the video that I watched, their thread was a lot thicker than mine. So do you have to do like French knots in a different stitch thickness? Oh, hey, I think I did it. Yay. It's a little bit uneven and bulky, but I can live with that. That's cool. All right, we'll finish that off and move on to the next stitch. Okay, while we're on yellow, I figured we'd do the cable stitch that it wants us to do on its face. And from what I understand of this cable stitch is that you want to do kind of like, I'm probably like going to explain this really wrong, but you do a stitch, come up through the middle, you do the same thing, but then you come up through the middle on the opposite side. So I'm pulling this to the top, whereas last time if I hadn't have pulled it to Tight. Ugh, that's not even in camera. Jeez, sorry. And then it goes underneath. Hey, look, I did it. I'm always so like proud of myself when I do this. Of course, the last stitch and we get a knot. No, no. Everything about this stitch sucks. Oh boy. All right, let's try a satin stitch. So I had a look at some videos on how to do a satin stitch, so they're giving us such a tiny area to do these things, but I guess that's okay because this is a seaplane and Animal Crossing people would know what I mean when I say that, but it's okay because we're beginners and I have no idea what I'm doing, so I hope that I'm doing this correctly.
So that's what my little satin stitch looks like. I think it's pretty cool. This one was really therapeutic to do. Oh look, I've got cat hair on it. Let's move on to trying. All right, we've got red, so how about? Okay, have a look at this, right? So in this little photo, it's got these stitches here. And they're kind of triangular, looking like coat hangers or zigzags. All right, tell me where that is. Nowhere. So I'm going to have to try and find out what stitch that is. I wouldn't recommend this kit. It's very frustrating. We're on the red. How about we do um, this around here, which is supposed to be a lighter shade of red than around its face, apparently. So that's going to be a, what's it called? A back stitch. Maybe I should have like, you know, a little spacer thing painted on my thumbnail next time I do these. So there's my little back stitch. I think I did alright on that one. I'm going to try and figure out what stitch they wanted here. So I'm going to go do some research on YouTube and find that out. Okay, so I couldn't figure out what this stitch was called. So I'm going to try and be clever. And it could fail epically. So it looks like what they've done is kind of done like two stitches across from each other and then done a stitch up here, pulled that through. If someone knows what this stitch is called, please let me know. And then it looks like they've kind of attached on like that and then started again. So I'll show you on their little terrible instructions. I think that's what I'm doing here. Someone who's better at embroidery, please let me know. But I couldn't really find anything. I found like chevron stitches and herringbone stitches and none of them seemed to do this technique. So I'm probably looking up the completely wrong thing. I'd say it's working out pretty well. I mean, ultimately you could just do like a zigzag pattern. But I wanted to find out how they did theirs on on the um the instructions. So you know, I noticed that they had a little stitch pulling up the top of the triangle. Oh boy. The back is not attractive. I've obviously left a little loop there. So there's a little zigzag. I'm pretty impressed with how I handled that one, considering it's not in the instructions. I'm going to be salty about that, okay? It should have instructions on how to do every stitch that it actually shows you on the piece. I, oh, the only one I haven't tried is a chain stitch. So. The chain stitches, they're saying go up in here, up in here. So let me quickly find out how to do a chain stitch and I'll be back. Okay, I'm back and I've learned how to do a chain stitch, I think. Well, hopefully. Um, so let's see how we go. We come up all the way and kind of through. We loop that around Ugh. and pull it through. 
Hey, look at that. So there's my little chain stitch. Look at that. The other thing they didn't say is how to do these little stars in the middle. So I'm going to go find a technique to do those. I did some research and in here it's got like just they've kind of done little crisscross star things, but that's boring and I'm a rebel. So I found this really nice way to do stars and I'm going to try that out. All right, so come in from the top of the spoke, go to the center. And do it for all the spokes. Okay, so that's the tiny little star, and I think that looks a lot neater than just going like crisscross over the top of it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go sit in bed, watch some Netflix, finish off um, this little fox here, and then I'll come back and let you know how I went. I'll let you know my final thoughts, and yeah. Okay, so it is the next day and I worked a little bit on my fox last night and here is the result. So I basically just did the outline like it told us to do in the very vague instructions, but I also added little things to practice techniques like the herringbone stitch, which I did in the tail and up here on the leaf. And I did a bit of a satin stitch in the ears. If I had more time, I probably would have done a little bit more detail, but honestly, this took me so long. I, I can't even believe how long it took me. I have so much respect for people that do embroidery because of how long it takes. I think the longest thing is actually setting up the needle um, and threading the needle because it's so fiddly and you have to get such a precise point to thread it. And yeah, I'm used to threading one thread through the eyelet rather than threading two and then up here I tried doing four and then up here I tried doing six and just each time it got harder and harder to thread. I'm not sure if there's different embroidery needles for different techniques or anything like that but this was just the basic one that came with the kit that I was using and it has a quite a small eyelet um, and it's suitable for the two strands but once you start adding more it got a little bit more difficult. But yeah, so in terms of the kit, I I wouldn't say I wouldn't say it was worth it, honestly. I bought it for about $20 from Spotlight, which is the equivalent to Joanne's in America, I think. But all it came with was an embroidery hoop, some calico with a print on it, some embroidery thread, and some really vague instructions and most of what I learned I had to look up on YouTube and watch tutorials on how to do it anyway so it didn't honestly teach me much but honestly $20 could just buy you all this stuff and the internet could teach you the rest it's not that hard to find the resources online compared to what I got given in this kit I think if they'd had a booklet or something outlining the steps of how to do each stitch it would have made it a little bit more worth it so anyway guys thank you so much for watching don't forget to let me know which craft kit you'd like to see me do next uh, leave a thumbs up on this video and subscribe so you can get notified when I do another craft kit and I'd like to thank you so much for being here and have a great day see ya